Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. <laughs> it's been a while since I've said that. Yeah, feels like it. Coming up, racial profiling, mm -hmm. enraged dad. Yes. The Natalie Wood story mm -hmm. continued. Yes. And Ronnie's romantic gift for Valentine's Day for his wife. That's yeah. all next on Men Are So Smart, The Week in Review. Okay, Ronnie, so look, I want to talk about uh, Valentine's Day is about two weeks away. Right. At the time of this recording. Yes. And it came to my attention through a social media post that um, you got some Valentine's Day gifts for your wife. Now, this is a show for men, done by men, about men. Right. So we're just showing you an example, perhaps, of what you can do for your wife uh, that's romantic for Valentine's Day. Okay, so there's the setup, Ron. Well, and not everybody can do this. I totally get it. But I did. Got my wife a new dishwasher, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a new oven slash microwave combo. I'm taking notes. Hold on. Then, to kind of put a bow on it. Yeah, yeah. Got her new garbage disposal. Wow, you are the king, man. Yeah, all you that. Were, you were like the king of Valentine's Day. I, I, think, I think I knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Um. So there you go. Um, j just some ideas in advance of Valentine's Day that you can do for your wife just to be romantic like us. I mean, that's now she was thrilled. On a lighter note, uh, Ronnie, you did a blog <laughs> about volu Valentine Volunteers Day. <laughs> I did. There's another. I, I couldn't just remember that one. I just created another <laughs> greeting card holiday right there. Volunteer Day. <laughs> Uh, uh, so you did a blog. I did. I did one on some thoughtful gifts for Valentine's Day. Okay. Uh, ironing board slash iron. Perfect. Uh, vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Inappropriate. I can tell you've been watching Ask Mr. Roman. <laughs> yes. Those, those are inappropriate <laughs> gifts. He's, he's nutty. So, but you know what? And not everybody has a ton of money. And so what you could do is you can wash your wife's car and. Oh, vacuum, yeah, that's a great idea. Vacuum the interior and clean mm -hmm. the wheels and tires. Don't um, you have kids to do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Neither do I. No, in fact, I Apparently. used to wash my kids' cars. <laughs> I like washing cars. I hope you cars. wash your kids. Yes, All I, right. I like washing cars. Okay, so check out Ronnie's blog. Uh, give the address. Do you remember it? Uh, CorvetteRonnie.blogspot.com. CorvetteRonnie.blogspot.com. Yes. Check him out. Yep. Uh, mine are there as well. Okay, racial profiling taking place this week. Uh, an Iowa man claims he was racially profiled at a West Des Moines store, and his recording of the encounter with employees has now gone viral, Ronnie. Uh, James Conley III posted a series of videos on his Facebook page saying employees at the Old Navy thought he was wearing unpurchased apparel. Yeah, so he said, I found two hoodies, and I went to the cash register to check out and I was asked if I was going to purchase the jacket I had on. Yeah, picture this now. Hmm. Okay. Connolly said, uh, adding that he got the jacket as a Christmas gift. Mm -hmm. uh, he also stated that at first he thought it was a joke. He kind of giggled until the employee told him his jacket need to be scanned because it came from Old Navy. Uh, there were customers, Caucasian customers, in front of him and behind him who had on Old Navy apparel or apparel similar to what he had on. They didn't get checked or anything, he said. After scanning the jacket, Conley said employees tried to make him pay for it. The stalemate reportedly ended, and this is amazing, Yeah, the time, the sign of the times, uh, after the manager reviewed surveillance footage and saw that this gentleman had been wearing the jacket when he entered the store. <sighs> Rut row. Yeah. No can do, senor. Yeah. His, his post was shared with over 100,000 people. Wow. Uh, he states he did not get any apology from the manager, uh, district manager, or any other employees. Gap uh, officials released a statement. I guess Gap owns Old Navy. Uh, did, I, I didn't so. know that. Mm -mm. Uh, saying in part... At Old Navy and across Gap, Inc., we maintain a zero means zero policy and we are actively investigating the situation. We are a company made up of diverse people from all backgrounds and cultures. The statement continued, we encourage diversity in thought, 
celebrate diversity in each other and demand tolerance and inclusion always. Thomas Newkirk, a Des Moines civil rights attorney said, the video is a perfect example of what store management shouldn't do. Sounds like an hmm. HR uh, training film to me. Yeah. Um, but that Conley acted reasonably. Conley has what's called a denial of service case. That's law speak. He could file a claim with the Iowa Civil Rights Act. He likened the case to the blatant racism that black Americans experienced in the Jim Crow area. And that's pretty substantial right there. Yeah. A statement. Uh, you're denying service the same way they, as if they put up a sign that said whites only. Uh, I, in this day and age, you can document it on video, on a camera. He did that. He did it respectfully. He kept his temper. He did everything he should do. Conley would have legally been within his rights to just walk out, yeah. Kirk said. Yep. Uh, store posted a sign saying it was temporarily closed on Wednesday. Conley has since hired an attorney for the case. Well, you know what they're doing. They roll those doors down. They leave them down. And uh, what they want the public to know is that they're taking this seriously. Right. And they're enough to close the doors for right. a day so we can train our employees. Why would they do that? Why didn't they do that in the first place? Well, it's, it's really in it hindsight. It seems obvious. It's too bad it didn't happen. Sunday, <laughs> yeah. or big game Sunday. <laughs> Great, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> now I gotta bleep that. All right. Um, uh, in, in all, in reality, and I, I watched the video. You know what? The man was calm. He was documenting it. Um, it is. It's a little bit shocking that if you have video surveillance, before you stop and accuse the guy, run it back real quick and see what he was wearing when he came in. We have a pretty sophisticated uh, security <sighs> system where I work, and Trico right up here, and um, we we can do that. I mean, Within now yeah, seconds yeah. almost, yeah. you know, um, it can be reviewed that fast. So that's really, you know, that's... Instead of getting yourself in a lot of hot water, yeah. just, man, and they I know they have people uh, up there monitoring videos constantly. Mm -hmm. Just have somebody push the rewind button until they see them come in. They'd be... All this would be non-existent had they done that. Yeah. Yep. Seems like somebody dropped the ball. Yeah. All right, next up in our Week in Review, the enraged father of three daughters sexually abused by Larry Nassar, char charged towards the former USA Gymnastics national team doctor and tried to attack him during a sentencing hearing in a Michigan courtroom on Friday of this last week. He was nearly within striking distance before court guards tackled him roughly to the ground in front of his shocked daughters. You see that in the picture here. Uh, the chaotic scene began after sisters Lauren and Madison Margraves had finished tearfully reading their victim statements on the second day of hearings at a court in Eaton County, much as nearly 200 women have done before them at earlier hearings. Standing alongside his daughters and wife, Randall Margraves, a tall man with an intense gaze dressed in electrician's union sweatshirt, then asked to speak. I would ask you... As part of the sentencing, to grant me five minutes in a locked room with this demon, he said, gesturing towards Nasser, who has already been sentenced up to 175 years in prison at an earlier hearing after pleading guilty to molesting young women under the guise of medical treatment. Uh, the judge, uh, Janice Cunningham, told him he knew she could not do that. Yeah and chastised him after he called Nassar a son of a bitch. Uh, he asked for only one minute instead, which would probably be enough. I saw That's a video. compromise. Yeah, that's a pretty good compromise. Mm -hmm. And the, the guy was big. Yeah, uh, the judge should be a little easier on him. Yeah, uh, the judge demurred as uh, some in the courtroom laughed uncomfortably. Yeah, like we yeah, just did. There's a little bit of giggling back there. Yep. And then mm -hmm. Margraves bolted told, towards Nassar, seated in an orange jumpsuit nearby, as his daughter's hands flew to their mouths. Gasps, cries, and shouts filled the courtroom as Margraves was wrestled to the ground, knocking things on a desk or off a desk on the way down. Uh, he was put in handcuffs and taken out of the courtroom. One minute, he demanded repeatedly. <laughs> Just one minute with that guy. Haven't we all said that at some point? 
Yeah. And, and, you know, generally speaking, it pertains to rapists, yeah. murderers, child and child molesters. molesters. Yeah. 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 Um, we all have said that at one time or another. Just give me five minutes with that guy in a room. So this father um, found himself in that situation. Yeah. It actually happened to him. Now, we could go on with the story, but um, let, let's talk about this a little bit, Ronnie. Um I think there were two hundred and almost two hundred and sixty witnesses that testified against him. Yeah, over two hundred for mm-hmm. sure. Um, and you know what? And it's uh, to me, it's a little overkill. I mean, he's already he's looking at you know he's never going to see the light of day. Three again. lifetimes in prison. Yeah. So, but you know, I know they do it for a, uh, as a way of the victims being able to kind of reconcile. It a little bit and it's torturous to the perpetrator yes yeah i'm sure well unless you're a complete monster and then it doesn't affect you at all um so i mean i get it but you know what it seems like a courtroom should be a little bit more uh you know respectful Respected. yeah you you really need to kind of tone it down in a courtroom uh, and in fact, I saw the lead prosecutor get on and tell people in the in the audience, this doesn't help anybody. Yeah, not uh, helping anybody's case. No. And... So, and she's totally right. Um, but I mean, if you watch enough YouTube, uh, I'll bet you that today this is on YouTube already. Yeah, sure. And then your feed will show similar YouTube videos. There are probably about fifty of them, where. Uh, victims get up and lunge at the their attackers, mm-hmm. or you know their, you know the, the whoever attacked their children or their wife. Um, so it's it's not the first case. Uh, it won't be the last case, that's for sure. But let's talk about this. Uh, we're both dads of girls, and so um, it's no secret that there's always special relationships between dads and their daughters. Oh yeah, yeah. If I, I, what would what would you do in a situation like this if it were your daughter? You know, honestly, I'm not sure I could even sit in the courtroom in the courtroom while she was describing it. Mm-hmm. I I would be I would be so infuriated. I would probably have a stroke. So it, it would not be healthy for me to be in that courtroom while my daughter was describing something like that. Um, I- you know, here's my response. One minute. Yeah. Yeah. Just one minute. I mean, I, I think every dad out there would, would say the same thing. Ronnie, so uh, I always turn to you when it comes to matters of law enforcement. What happens to a prisoner of this ilk? So what they are in prison, they become uh, what's called PC or... Uh, uh, protective custody. Yeah, protective custody. And he will be not only in prison for the rest of his life, but he will probably be separated from everybody else except prison guards for the rest of his life. Uh, Occasionally, you may find a couple of PC prisoners that hit it off. And so they can be out at the same time. They can, yeah, they can socialize and go to yard and, you know, outdoor rec and indoor rec and what have you together but for the most part that's going to be a while before they can really you know it's kind of like introducing two dogs together oh, yeah. uh, they may or may not get along it's a 50 50 it's, it's a flip of a coin yeah. so uh, you have to kind of introduce them slowly and make sure everything's good and then hey, if everything seems okay maybe he has somebody but I have seen uh, people we had the Unabomber uh, in our our jail while he was going to court and he got to see nobody mm. uh, we didn't want to take a chance of some other prisoner attacking him well that's what I'm getting and at. trying to kill him and then become you know famous for killing the Unabomber so same thing here you don't want uh, another prisoner in your in your prison to become famous for killing Larry Nassar and so you kind of have to keep him separate from other people what does that do to a prisoner's mind to be separated from society completely? Uh, well, in the Unabomber's case, he tried to hang himself with his underwear. 
So, I mean, that's... Uh, that's the ultimate wedgie. That's... <laughs> Except he put it around his neck. Yeah, and it wasn't... Yeah, he wasn't hanging that way. Yeah. But, I mean, it really does. I'm sure it's a psychological... Although, if you look at where the guy was captured, he was in a 10 by 10 cabin in the uh, middle of Montana, completely by himself. So... Lone wolf. I, I don't think the... You know, the being alone part was killing him, but I think the... The part that he had been, you know, you thought he was so smart and he had been captured and undone kind of by his own doing uh, when he published his uh, his manifesto. Uh, I think it all kind of caught up with him and he got a little bit uh, depressed and figured, I'm, I'm going to die in prison anyway. I may as well just die. All right, finally, the case of Natalie Wood. For some of our younger viewers, you may not be aware of this particular woman, she was married to an actress by the name of Robert uh, Wagner. Wagner, of course. And many, many years ago, they were on a boat along with actor Christopher Walken. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were partying. Christopher was in a movie with Natalie at that time, and they were partying on this boat. It was called The Splendor. And Allegedly, what took place was there was some loud noise towards the back of the boat, and no one was really quite sure whether that was a scuffle of some sort, or she was trying to stop a dinghy from banging against the side of the boat, which was keeping her awake. She was in one of the bedrooms when last seen. Um, ultimately what happened was she was found dead. Um, overboard. Overboard, yes, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And with signs of some sort of a scuffle, bruises, etc. Um, but no one saw it happen. The case has really not been talked about for many, many years. It's almost 40 years. But here's something I find really interesting. In this headline of this story, Natalie Wood's death, now deemed suspicious, now right. deemed suspicious, by authorities as new witnesses come forward. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> this happened in 81. Robert Wagner, Yeah. Natalie Wood, Christopher Walken, and the boat captain. Man, I got big cuts on my hand. <laughs> and that's all. Yeah. So where did these new witnesses come from, Ronnie? Well, from what I understand, there were boats also out at the same time that heard a scuffle. Uh-huh. So, um, but I don't think that this was deemed suspicious right from day one. Duncan Coffee. Go ahead. <laughs> this was not something that was like, Oh, she just drowned and, you know, swept under a carpet. It was suspicious right from the beginning, and it was investigated pretty well. I, I, I remember 1981 when this came out, and, I mean, this was in the news for a good spell. So for it to now be, but it's, you know, if if it's suspicious, and I'm not sure what it was eventually classified as, I think it was just a drowning, uh, an accidental death. So, um, but if there's anything at all, if somebody goes through and reopens up the case, and if they have other boats out there, and I'm not sure if they spoke to them, they must have spoke to the people on the other boats 40 years ago or however long this is now. One would think. That they, they must have said the same story back then. Um, well, that's not necessarily true because allegedly what's taking place with Robert Wagner is that um, he is now a person of suspicion and his story has changed over the years <clears throat> uh, as other witnesses' stories have stayed exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And so um, there is some doubt. Um well, you know, a person lot of, of it, interest, that's that's the category. Some of this could have been clouded also because the noise they were hearing was Christopher Walken playing a cowbell. Yeah. That could be because he always asked for more cowbell. Mm -hmm. he's, he's a big cowbell fan. Yeah. 
More cowbell. I got a fever. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for the week in review. We hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please give the video a thumbs up. That would be really cool. Uh, what we really would love to have you do is subscribe to our channel, and that's very easy. In a moment, uh, we'll have a banner that will show up that will allow you to do so by clicking on it. Uh, below, you can find all of the information to get a hold of us, uh, including our website, our, all of our social media, etc., our blogs, yep. anything. Yep. We would love to be able to interact with you. Yes. Uh, you can leave us comments. In fact, you know what, Ronnie? Hmm. <clears throat> hmm. Screen one down. I got a, a fever. <laughs> a fever. <laughs> I got a comment <clears throat> from a young man who had watched the fart episode. If you want to watch it, it just popped up there. And he commented on how hilarious it was, especially the part where I may or may not allegedly have passed gas on the video. So uh, I did a little research on this guy. <clears throat> He's a graduate of Cornell University. Well, He's in the medical... Um, field <laughs> he is a he is an incredible photographer oh my good friend aaron kondratiev who was my first girlfriend in fourth grade <laughs> i thought she was the best photographer i've ever seen and no deference to you my dear you know how much i love you but this guy takes it to another level He's not working in the Polaroid uh, format, though. No. No. I'm going to give you some more information on that as well in this episode um, where you can see his videos. You'll want to check it out. And you may even want to buy some of them. They really are that good. Okay, that's it. Well, that's all the time yeah, we got. we're out. All right. Uh, this has been uh, The Week in Review. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Next time. Later. <laughs>